Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing 3D in AutoCAD 2026. So this is just a beginner's guide and let's get right into it. All right, so we're going to start with opening a new drawing. So just come over here to the new. We're going to click on new and we're going to open up our new drawing. Now I'm not going to do anything with units or anything. We're just going to go straight into getting 3D working in AutoCAD 2026. If you don't have anything up here about 3D, just come here, click on the bar with your right mouse button, and you're going to see there is a show tabs drop down menu. And you're going to see in here it's going to have a variety of tabs. So we're just going to come here, we're going to go down, and you're going to see there's the 3D tools. We're going to click that and it's going to activate our 3D tools palette. So once that's open, we can click on 3D tools and we have opened our 3D tools. Now, before we start drawing with 3D tools, what we need to do is we need to talk about our system over here where we view our projects and our objects. So this is especially important if you're using 3D in AutoCAD uh, because you're going to be having to orbit around things and look at things from different angles all the time. Uh, so I'm just going to show you how to quickly use this. So you just come here, if you click the bottom left hand corner, you're going to be brought to an isometric view um, from again the bottom left hand corner. If you click the right, you're going to be brought to an isometric view from the right, you know, vice versa. If you click on the corner here, it's going to bring you into not an isometric view, but it's still a three dimensional view looking at like an angle, I guess you could say. And you can see that this little box that we have here shows us what where our draw where we are on our drawing so we're in the top left looking from the front um, and you can see that this box just kind of tells you you know where you're looking from and you know the direction so south we have north east south west all these other things in here just to show you how things work so remember to use this um, it can get a little confusing sometimes if you're clicking around too much i recommend you only stay usually you're only going to need to stay in an isometric view so again i usually use the front or the front top left which is where we are right now or the front top right which is where we are currently where i just switched it right now so that is how you get around the drawing uh, it can again get a little confusing if you click other things but just for the sake of this just stick to this because it's going to make it way easier if you just stick to this thing here and stick on these three views you can you know play around with it figure it out um, but again for this tutorial those three views so let's actually get into drawing now so there's a few ways that you can actually do 3d drawing in autocad uh, 2026 so this goes for most other previous versions of autocad as well is you can go and draw a 2d object and then you can extrude it and create a 3D object from that. So we're just going to click on the top here, and you're going to see this is one of the problems you may run into where you were looking at the top, but we're angled a little bit. If you just come here and click these little arrows up here in the top right hand corner, that will allow you to, you know, zoom around and get to where you want to go. So I want to go this way and I want to be in this direction. So if I come here back to my home tab, uh, I can grab a polyline and let's say I'm just going to draw, I'm just going to draw something. It's not going to be super straight. It's just going to be, you know, a random object. Once I'm done, I press escape. You know, I make sure that's all closed up and it's good to go. And once that's done, I'm going to go back into my 3D view and I'm going to show you what an extrusion is. So one thing that I will mention, you're going to wonder, okay, well, why did I draw it in 2D before I drew it in 3D? So the reason for that uh, is because when you're drawing in 3D, sometimes it's going to look straight to you. But if you go to another uh, view, like let's say I go to this view, then my line will look like it's going up or it's going down and it's just in the, the Z axis or the Z axis if you're in uh, other countries. It's in that axis instead of just being flat 2D XY. So that's why I recommend if you are doing 2D to 3D, draw it in 2D, then go 3D. Because then that way you're not going to have that issue of it going all over the place and everything will be straight. Um, so back to what we were talking about though, we're going to extrude this. So what is the extrusion tool? Well, it, sounds, it does exactly what it sounds like it does. It extrudes an object. Uh, so we can select that. Uh, if we come up here, you can see we have the extrude tool. Once we select that, or we type it in, um, you can. it's going to say select objects to extrude, or uh, we're not going to deal with any of those. We're not going to deal with mode. We're just going to select the object that we want to extrude. So we're going to select the object we have here. So click it, press enter, and then it's going to ask you to specify the height of the extrusion. So we have a variety of objects here, uh, or options here. We can do direction, path, taper, angle, expression. Again, we're just trying to extrude it up, so we don't need to worry about that and we'll just keep going. So you can just type in, let's say 50, press enter, and then your object is gonna be right here. So you can see that we've created a 3D object. 
out of a 2D object. If we go back to 2D, it doesn't look like anything's changed. If we go back to 3D, then you can see that it has changed. So that's one way you can do it. So that's how you would extrude an object from a 2D object. Uh, one thing to mention is uh, this is a solid, so this is a completely enclosed object, and that's why it extruded properly and in this way. If you don't have a completely flat object, so let's say I just draw you know, a line or something here, and I want to extrude that, so I go there, I click extrude, and I select it. I'm going to extrude, I can't extrude lines, but you're going to see that because it's a flat face, I guess you could say, um, it's giving us these faces, and it just kind of creates this little, you know, block, this blocky, like, wall-looking type thing. So that's what happens if you don't close objects. So, again, the difference between these is this is a solid object, this isn't a solid object. So if I have a bunch of lines creating a... Um, a rectangle or, or a square or some other object that you could say is just lines, it will not fill it and it will just do this with the lines and extrude them up. So um, please keep that in mind when you are using the program. So the next thing we kind of want to talk about is creating just 3D objects. If we come over here and we click on our box, you can see we have all these objects we can instantly start out with. So you know, you can come here, you can click box and you can go and you draw a box. So it's kind of like what we did with the extrusion before, except this time it's you're drawing your object and then you're extruding after. So it significantly increases the, you know, how long it takes for you to, or sorry, it decreases the time it takes for you to actually draw the object. Um, you can see here we have, you know, cylinders. So we come here, we play with our cylinder and, you know, all of this is just kind of self-explanatory. You can go through and play with that and continue on with that. If you want to learn how to use AutoCAD and learn how to make floor plans like this and you have no idea how to do it and you also want to do 3D designs like the one I'm showing you here, then go check out this free training we got for you. We detail how you can learn how to do this, the best ways of learning this, and how you can practice properly and obtain your certification. So if you want to be an actual draftsman, if you want to get real you know, education that doesn't cost you 10 grand or more and you know, two to four years of time, then go check out this presentation. We got the link for you. Go check it out. We look forward to seeing you there. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to take a look at our visual styles so we can kind of figure out, okay, what does our object actually look like instead of a bunch of you know, 3D lines like I just drew it in kindergarten. What you want to do is you want to type in visual styles into your search bar. Um, if you can't, again, if you can't type, like just start typing, uh, you can look for it up here, but I'm using AutoCAD 2026 and I don't have the visual styles actually in here yet, so that's why I'm typing it. But if you do have it up there, you can just click that and you can switch them around. Or you can come here, type in into your command bar. If you've watched our videos, you know this command, DYN mode. Uh, press enter and you're going to see it's going to ask you to enter a new value press three that's what i currently have press that uh, and then once it's done you are good to go so what that does is it allows you to just type commands onto your keyboard instead of having to go to the command bar uh, or having to click things so what you want to do is type in visual styles once that's done you can see we have three press we just want the top one so press enter and then you're going to be brought to your visual style so what this does is it's going to allow you to change what your 3d objects look like as you can see what i'm doing here you can, it's giving you an idea of how it looks. So we have a few object, you know, ways to do this, you know, shape of gray, um, you know, sketchy, wireframe, you know, more solid objects, ones that are more realistic. So you can see here, it's going to show you kind of what it looks like realistically. And then that would be what our face looks like that we created from the line there. So that's how you change the visual style. So I recommend that you always go and check to make sure things look okay in uh, a style such as this, which is, I think, realistic. Yeah, this is shaded. So um, this would be a realistic type of look. So just make sure it works. And then when you're working, I do recommend you use, um, you know, wireframe for most things because it just helps things. So that's how you do your visual style. So I'm going to get out of there and we're going to move on here. Um, so we're going to give you some examples on some of these commands. So we have the revolve command, we have the loft command, we have the sweep command. Um, generally, revolve is a good to, is a good way to do things. So uh, we're going to go and touch on that right now. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the revolve command. So what you want to do is you want to come over here to your home. You want to create, let's say, a rectangle or some other object. So we're going to create a rectangle. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this rectangle and we're going to revolve it. So go back to your 3D tools, click revolve, click on the object, press enter. And then it's going to ask you to specify the access start point or define the access by. So you want to start it, you know, where you want to start. I'm going to start in the middle. Um, and I'm just going to draw it in this direction. Now, this is a rectangle square type object, so it's not really going to matter which direction I go. But that's going to matter because it's going to depend on um, what direction you're going to be revolving from. So actually, let's do this side. And then you're going to see that it's creating this 
revolving uh, object here. So I can close it up and make it like a complete object. I can do like three quarters, I can do half, uh, and that's just kind of how the revolve command works. So we're gonna go take a look at that in a minute, but let's say if we have an object that's maybe, you know, not as, as clean and nice and beautiful as that one, what we can do is we could just come here, we can draw an object, make sure that when you're drawing in 3D, that you are getting it in a two dimensional space because that's something that's gonna happen. I'm making sure my snaps are all set and everything. Once that's done, I can grab this. Uh, I can go back to my 3D tools and click revolve. I can select that and it's gonna ask me which axis I want it on. So I'm just gonna go and snap it to that axis and you're gonna see it's gonna give me another object. So if I just do half of that, um, we're gonna be able to see, okay, it, it revolved on that axis. But if I go back and I get rid of it and then if I do it the other way, so if I click this, press enter, um, I select this and then I pull it this way, you're going to see that it's going to give me an object that's, you know, different and revolved in a different way than the previous one was. Um, so that's how you would use the revolve command. Uh, I'm not going to go over sweep or loft in this tutorial, but, you know, it requires a little bit more. I just wanted to show you the basics of the program as well. So another thing that you can you can keep in mind and when you're creating things is meshes. So if we come here, I'm just going to quickly touch on meshes. You can come here, you can see we can create a mesh box, cone, cylinder, whatever. All the other great things we can create over here, we can create in here. So I'm just going to click box and then I'm going to go and create a mesh box. So I'm going to come here, create a mesh box. And the first thing you're going to notice is you can see that I have a significant amount of faces on here in comparison to my other just solid objects. So the reason for this is because it just gives you the ability to... Um, create an object that's more, I guess, tuned to what you need it to be. And it just creates like a, think of like molding plasticine or something like that. It kind of allows you to do that in the program. So you're going, okay, well, what happens if I want to have more faces? So if I come here, you can see I have my convert to mesh. I have my refined mesh, smooth, uh, smooth less, smooth more. Um, you can see here, I have the same commands here that I was just going over. But, uh, you know, I can't smooth less than this because this is the lowest it'll go. But if I click smooth more, you're going to see it's going to create a much smoother object. Uh, and it's going to allow me to do that. If I click refine mesh, it's going to create all these little meshes. So you can see here, this is just insane. I have all these little meshes in here that I can then pull out. Um, so I'm actually going to go back because this can crash your computer. Uh, and I don't want that. I'm going to go to my visual styles. And I'm going to press enter. I'm going to do a conceptual realistic type one. And this is what our object looks like uh, as a smooth, smooth mesh. Now, those are our objects from before. Obviously, this one has a little difference in it. Uh, it's hard to kind of tell they're different because of um, just the way it's oriented right now. But anyways, back to our stick of butter, I guess you could say. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this and we're going to play around with that. So I'm going to add some meshes, make sure my computer doesn't crash, and then I'm going to come back to it. If you like our channel and the free content that we produce for you, then consider joining and becoming a channel member. Becoming a channel member for less than the price of a cup of coffee, you're getting all these free tutorials for AutoCAD, where it would cost thousands of dollars to get actual formal education. So if you'd really like to support us and you like our channel, please consider joining. We have a few of you that have joined and we're so thankful to you because it really does assist us and it really does help us offset the costs of making these free tutorials. So please consider it guys. Thank you so much for even watching the videos. It really does help. Take care and we hope this is helpful and let's continue on with the tutorial. All right, so I did a little bit of testing and I've come back to this and it looks like we can't do this without crashing it. So, so what you wanna do is you wanna type in a command called mesh extrude and this does exactly what extrusion does except it does it on a mesh face. So what we can do is we can, you can see here it's selecting our faces and I can actually grab, let's say, you know, this portion here I can press enter and then I can pull it out. So you can see I've created quite the elastic model. Uh, it's very, very, very smooth. And it just lets me pull it out like that. So, but you should, and you can also just push it in and, uh, you know, do a bunch of funky things with it. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. But I am going to show you because that's like, this is quite the large, I guess you could say, blocks of mesh. If you want it to be more specific, you can come up here, click refine mesh. And you're going to have all these little mesh blocks in there. So what we can do is we can come in here to zoom in really, really fine. And then we can do mesh extrude and we can click on one of these. We can press enter and we can actually pull it out. Now I am going to tell you right now, this is going to lag the absolute living daylights out of your computer. So keep that in mind, but this just shows you the capabilities of how you can actually make it work. One of the problems with this though, is you can see it created like a completely boxed object. So I would recommend that when you refine your mesh, um, you know, you keep it so that it's, somewhat larger so that we get what we had before. 
Um, and, you know, we're going to have a more detailed tutorial on that in the future, but I just thought this was just a good tutorial to give out to you guys um, as a, you know, starter, I suppose, to get you started on it. So that's how you would do your main objects, create a mesh, and do some uh, revolving and other things. So, again, hopefully this was helpful, guys, to get you guys started. And, uh, you know, if you need more help, check out our other videos on the channel. Take care, and we'll see you in the next one.